Once upon a time in a land across the sea, there's an island with magical, mystic trees, towering, aromatic, tropical evergreens that produce the spices of nutmeg and mace. Until the conquerors brought war into a once peaceful land, their thirst for control. For wealth, drag Banda natives into a desolation for over 300 years. This is the lore of Banda, the land of spice. Activities in Ratu Village, Bandanera. Now we are heading to Belgica. Yeah. 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 Today is the last day for Ratu Village to open their village, or here they call it Buka Kampung. Buka Kampung is a rite performed by indigenous people in Banda as a way to cherish and honor their ancestors during a week of cultural events. The sacred part of the ritual is the performance of Chakalele dance. Small streets. We're walking around 200 kilometers to Bandanera's most iconic and imposing fortification, the Belgica Fort. Constructed by the Dutch in 1611, Belgica Fort was designed to guard against sea threats and to protect the colonialists from any uprising by Bandanera locals. The dance depicts a resistance. Chakalele shows the defining quality of Maluku people. They are brave, tenacious, and heroic. This is more than just a dance performance. Prior to this, they had to perform all sorts of ritual at their traditional home. The ritual is called putar tempat siri. They ask permission from their ancestor to perform the dance. On the table, they lay out attributes to perform chakalele, such as the outfit, the headwear, hulubalang and malesi, the mock spear, swords and shield. Next, they must perform the putar jester or crown rite during the afternoon. Only the chakalele dancer and five fathers and five mothers are allowed to be in the room. This must be done quick and quietly, as if they're preparing for an ambush.
ceremony is opened with my my dance. This symbolizes asking for permission to go to war in front of the five parents and sisters. Jackalalek can formally begin. There are five people in a dance acting as a capitan or the captains. The Hulu Balang that dress in black as the leader of the pack. And then Malesi in pink attire. What distinguished Ratus village Jakalele dance is their headpiece ritual. Each dancer recites five dance moves that are taught by their ancestor from one generation to the next. Their legs are moving in the fast-paced beat of Tiwal, Gander and Gong. If you listen carefully, the sound they make is like the drums of war in ancient times. The sanctity of the dance has a spiritual meaning. This dance is often believed to be a dance to summoning the ancestor's spirit. Therefore, this dance can only be performed during the Buka Kampung period. Sebelum kita melaksanakan tarian cakalele, kita harus buka kampung dulu, kerja ritual, bawa tempat siri, makam pala leluhur, kita berdoa di sana, kita minta keselamatan. He indicated that in the past, the dance was a seance to search for missing person or spirit. It's quite common that the dancer would be possessed. <laughs> but I won't tell you which one. However, when Islam entered Banda Neira, it fused Islamic elements to the right. Pohon bambu sana itu jumlahnya 17 ruas. Aha. Arti apa dalam 17? Jumlah rakaat. Rakaatnya yeah. dalam satu hari. Dalam satu hari. Kenapa ada cabang 5 di sana? Uh, Salat 5 waktu. 5 waktu. Dalam satu hari, lima waktu, tujuh belas rakaat. Moyang-moyang kita tidak bisa menyebar agama itu seperti yang sekarang. Mereka atur gitu. Daylight. This is going to be the closing ceremony. The village, uh, Ratu village, will close tonight and they will symbolize the closing ceremony with Chakalele again. Hello, Salam Ibu. They repeat a step to start the dance ritual. What you witness is a ceremony called Putar Tempat Siri Besar. Once again, they perform in the dark night, lurking around the pool in a gestures of hug, saying farewell to the spirit. As music goes higher, tears burst in between. Perhaps this is the spiritual meaning behind it. Some kind of cultural intelligence from people in the past to stand against cruel adversity during colonialization. They pour it in a language the colonizer couldn't comprehend, a cultural dance performance. Jacques Cousteau was not the only famous person that set foot on Banda Island, though. Mm. This place is so beautiful that back then, uh, several famous people used to come down here and uh, have a vacation here, like Princess Diana. I'm not lying, I heard 
that from the locals. Princess Diana, Sarah Ferguson, Mick Jagger, I heard he came down here. Also, Francis Ford Coppola. Isn't that cool? Well, let's get into it then. Me and the crew sail to an island that is only 20 minutes boat ride from Bandanera. Today's team is pretty large. Not only diving, we want to follow a fisherman to go spare fishing. First stop, the Banana Island. Can't shape like a banana. But after the independence of Indonesia, the government renamed the island to Shahrir Island as a tribute. For those of you who don't know who Shahir is, Shahir was a former minister, prime minister of Indonesia. It was like back in 1945. He and the former vice president Muhammad Hatta was exiled in Bandanera from 1936 to 1942. Both reside at Bandanera Island and left a mark that would eventually bring Indonesia to the independence. The Shahrir Island now is inhabited by around 200 people. The houses around here are very different from what I saw in the mainland. It's built on stilts and smaller in size. It feels like walking around an old fisherman's village. Much like the other island around Bandan, nutmeg also grows here, but Shahrir Island is known for its coconut, which is perfect to quench my thirst from walking to the cliff I'm heading. I think we are getting closer to the viewing point. I can already hear the bee. This is amazing. The sparkling sapphire hue sea as far as my eyes can see. While the cool, refreshing breeze playfully dance with me, bringing the scent of the sea. Ooh, I can see our boat from here. I wonder what Ivan and his friends are doing. And following the fisherman Afandi to go spare fishing at Tanjung Seram, that is below the cliff where I am. This vertical wall transforms into a slope coral with a maximum depth of around 40 meters with good visibility. Ivan and Afandi dive 30 meters below. Strong currents go hand in hand with lots of fish. Here you might encounter a school of jack, emperor anglefish, damselfish, blackback and scrawled butterfly fish. Oh, I could really go on. Back to Afandi, who stalk patiently above the fishes. With his 
despair, Afandi thrusts his prey and catch a sturgeon fish. Ah, ooh la la, I guess that would be our lunch for today. They moved to another location called Lafa Flow. Situated directly beneath Mount Banda Api, where lava had flowed into the sea during the 1988 eruption. Turned out it created a phenomenal coral rebirth with diverse underwater gardens in just five years. Here from 20 down to 35 meters, you can explore a multitude of underwater gardens with densely packed corals such as gigantic table corals, warty finger corals, the Acropora corals. Mmm, little coral fishes would burst out of them like a confetti. Sometimes parrot fish or schooling of orange spine unicorn fish can be spotted. <laughs> Even green sea turtles say hi. Just in time for the lunch time, they're heading back to where I am at Shahrir Island Beach. While they're away, I finally can relax and have a good old beach fun. Like what Princess Diana did, probably. Mm. <laughs> well, I guess Alfred Russell is right about Banda. a great day. See the beauty on the unseen in Asia. Now let's get into the story that made Banda famous. Nutmeg. The Meristica tree very likely evolved here until the 18th century when it was smuggled out. The Banda region was the only place on earth where nutmeg and maize grew. Nutmeg had reached Byzantium 7,500 miles away on the other side of the world. It was the Arabs that traded nutmeg through the dark in Middle Ages, then China through the Silk Road in the 15th century, then Portuguese, the first European that landed here. In short, trade brought the inhabitants great wealth in the pre-modern period until the Dutch came and turned them into slaves. Before we moving too far on the history, I'm taking you to the oldest nutmeg plantation in Bandabasar Island. Hundreds of nutmeg trees stand tall on this 14 hectares of Keleliang natural forest reserves. Back then, Bandabasar was once covered in lava, that's what makes the soil here very fertile. Up until now, nutmeg is still the main commodity in Banda. The majority of Bandabasar population make a living as spice farmers, like Mr. Effendi Salam. He said nowadays one kilogram of nutmeg is worth 150,000 rupiah and the maize is 250,000 rupiah. He teaches me how to pick the nutmeg and identify the quality. Oh, okay. It's bitter. Mmm. Hey, gigi kuat, eh? Si muda, Pak. The first harvest of nutmeg trees takes seven to nine years after planting, and the trees reach full production after 20 years. 
Ah, it's no surprise that the age of nutmeg trees around here could reach 50 years old or more. Indonesia is leading the global production of nutmeg with 142,000 tons per year. To ensure the sustainability of the production, reforestation effort is important. You too can participate in continuing the legacy of nutmeg here in Banda Besar. We're going to plant this. You can't change the past, but for nutmeg farmers here, there's always a silver lining. Kami pun sangat bersyukur walaupun mereka dijajah. Kalau bisa tinggalkan aset untuk ketemu masyarakat. Ada di mana seperti pala dan juga kenari. Oh, jadi bapa melanjutkan warisannya ya? Iya, kami hanya melanjutkan saja tangan-tangan mereka yang sudah duluan tanam. Ya, kami hanya melanjutkannya saja. I want to dig into the history behind colonialization that lasted for more than 300 years. So I met a local historian, Lukman Ang, at Hollandia Fort around 500 kilometers from the forest. Built by VOC ruler Jan Pieterson Kuhn in 1621 during his bloody campaign, this fort that sit on top of 20-meter hill at Lontoir village was set as a surveillance post and a defense against slave revolt. Tujuan VOC itu kan selainnya berdagang tapi ingin monopoli. Mereka tidak seperti Portugis atau Spanyol yang selainnya berdagang dengan cara yang damai atau dengan bangsa Arab atau dengan bangsa Cina dan orang Melayu. Jadi untuk memonopoli rempah pala di Banda itu Belanda melakukan pertama yaitu perang yang bertajuk Spice War. Spice War ini perang yang terjadi antara tahun 1607 sampai 1622. Spice War ini cukup menarik karena ada keterlibatan orang-orang Cina yang sebelumnya sudah berdagang di sini, dia membantu orang-orang lokal dalam perang itu. Tapi pada akhirnya orang lokal juga kalah, penduduk Banda itu akhirnya kalah karena tahun 1621 Belanda melakukan genosida. According to Kuhn's own account, about 2,800 Banda people were killed and 1,700 enslaved by the Dutch. The treatment of the slaves was severe. The native Banda population dropped to 100 by 1681 and 200 slaves were imported annually to keep the slave population steady at 4,000. Tindakan Kuhn ini juga sendiri, istilahnya menjadi bumerang bagi Kuhn. Pada akhirnya dia yang dinilai memenangkan pertempuran dalam tanda kutip pertempuran milik VOC. Tapi ketika kejatuhan VOC, Kun juga berbalik diserang oleh orang-orang Belanda itu sendiri. Dampak yang ditimbulkan dari penjajahan di Belanda itu cukup panjang dan itu masih terasa sampai hari ini. And he's right. The town of Bandanera returns to its sleepy little place. On every corner of the small street that prevents you from going places by car, display old Dutch colonial buildings. Neat houses lined with pots of colorful flowers are tucked next to crumbling ruins and deserted entryways to unoccupied manors. All seem to lead you to remnants of the place's dramatic past. This place used to be the place where a massacre happened, but look at it now. Life continues, and now all I see is children playing and cows. I could sense the darkness in every inch of the rubbles, but for these kids, they only see a peaceful home. In spite of the sorrow printed on their bloodline, time has restored Banda to its pace. A thriving traditional market lies on the waterfront, jam-packed with daily hauls of fish, snacks, made out of aromatic spices that create a beautiful scent that permeates the air. Hmm, how am I supposed to describe Banda Neira? The 
place is built from mementos. It's easy to be swept away by its astonishing beauty. But within that, traces of dry tears and blood from the past linger in the land. However, the warm smiles of the locals bring you back to the reason why you're here. Can you imagine? This used to be more expensive than gold. But for me, there's also something that is as worthy as gold, is enjoying a sunset with my friend. vivid memories that you can carry for the rest of your life.